Hello, welcome to Study the Word. This is brought to you every week by the River Ridge Church of Christ that meets in Newburgh, Indiana. 5600 Van Road, two miles east of Castle High School, just off of 261 if you're familiar with the area. Folks, if you're not, we'd love to have you come and be with us and you can go to our website and find a map of the area and our times of services. So we certainly hope that you'll take advantage of that invitation and to come and assemble with us. Every week we deal with a Bible question and in just a few moments we will be dealing with another one. We do like you, our audience, to participate. Please take note of the phone number. We'd love to hear from you if you have a Bible question on your mind. And also keep that number written down because we're going to be offering some free Bible study helps that you can take advantage of. Just give us a call and let us know what your request is and we'll get it right out to you. And all of them, of course, are, are free. We just want to encourage you to, to open up your Bibles and study the Scriptures. That's why this program is called Study the Word and that's what we are going to do today. Our Bible question is going to be rather thought-provoking. And if you've been a regular uh, viewer of this program, you know that we try to do all that we can to stir up thinking and have people to think about spiritual things and their relationship with the Lord. And of course, today's question deals directly with that. Our question of the day, how would you react if I told you you were not saved? Now let me throw some scenarios out at you. Let's just say you're a person who believes in God and you pray all the time. You worship Him. And it de you also demonstrated that in your life by doing so many good things for other people that you are a, a very generous person. And because of that, a lot of people like you. And so we come back with the question, if you have all those qualities, and I recognize that you have all those qualities, how would you react if I said, you're not saved? Well, it is a hypothetical, although it might be hypothetical with you, but it's not with an individual that we read in the Bible. Because the qualities I just described that might exist in you existed in this person and yet he was not saved and I would hope that there would be more people in the world that would be just like this person of course after he heard the Word of God but I think a lot of his attitude existed before he heard what he needed to do to be saved but let's just go ahead and, and take a look at this individual I'm in Acts chapter 10 and I want to begin reading in verse 1. It says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what is called the Italian regiment, a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. Now here is a, no doubt, a God-fearing man. I mean, we have him praying. We have him uh, being devoted to God. We have him being very generous and, and helping other people. And even in this context, um, I don't have time to read the whole chapter today, but if you have a chance, remember Acts chapter 10, and you're going to notice that when this man was told to send for Peter to come and teach to him, um, you're going to notice that the men that were sent to, to get Peter spoke very highly of Cornelius. And so he, he had a good reputation. And so I might even be describing you as a person who's very God-fearing and, and, and people like you and approve of you. But you know, in the 11th chapter of Acts, this is, this is the, uh, where, where Peter gives an account of what happened in the, in the 10th chapter. But there's an interesting phrase in here that I want to bring out. And that is, as Peter was telling other people about 
Cornelius and how Cornelius was told to send for me and, and then I went to him and I taught him. And so as Peter's telling them what transpired, let me just begin reading in verse 13. It says, and he told us, Peter's doing the talking, and he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house and said to him, send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and your household will be saved. So now that is, that's really interesting. And that's really going to be thought provoking for us today in our study. Remember, our question is, if you've just tuned in, how would you react if I told you you're not saved? And so we're looking at a man by the name of Cornelius. And I'm wondering if you possess the same attitudes as this man. First of all, we pointed out that he was God-fearing. I mean, he prayed, he had a good reputation, and he was very generous with what he had. And so he was told to send for Peter so he could hear words by which he and his household would be saved. Now that's interesting. I mean, right off the bat, he's told you're not saved. How would you react if somebody told you that? There was a time in my life when people said, well, Chuck, you're not saved. And I actually thought I was. And before Cornelius was told to send for Peter, what was his attitude? Do you think that he was going through life thinking that he wasn't pleasing the Father? Well, why bother even being devoted to God? Why even bother praying to Him? Folks, you and I need to have the same qualities as this man if we're going to be saved. And so, if I were to tell you, you're not saved. Before we look at some of these wonderful qualities at Cornelius that helped him get to the point that he was saved, let's understand that there are certain things that we need to be aware of so that we don't convince ourselves that we are saved when we're really not. Now Cornelius didn't say, no, I'm not sending for Peter. No, he actually sent for him. And we're going to see why in just a moment. But see, it, it would have been easy for Cornelius to say, I'm saved. Why? Because I believe in God. You might be saying the very same thing. Oh, Chuck, if you said I wasn't saved, I, I wouldn't even pay attention to you because I believe in God. Well, well, wait a minute. First of all, I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm just saying hypothetically, what if I said you were not saved from a biblical standpoint, that the Bible teaches that you're not? Okay. See, Cornelius couldn't turn around and say, well, hey, I'm saved because I believe in God. You can't do that. I can't do that. What if we say, well, of course I'm saved. I'm a person who prays all the time. Well, Cornelius prayed all the time. And he was told he wasn't saved either. You might say, well, of course I'm saved. Because of my faith, my devotion towards God, I demonstrated in my life and and I do a lot of good things for other people. I'm very selfless. Well, you're describing Cornelius also. And he too was not saved. And so we need to be careful, folks, about what is causing us to have confidence that we are saved. It isn't based upon those things. It's not based upon a feeling that we have. It's, well, I feel that I'm saved. You know, Cornelius was sending for Peter so that he could hear words by which he could be saved. In other words, he would hear the message, he would know what he needed to do, and that he would do it. So now let's spend the rest of our time talking about the kind of qualities that helps people become saved when they're told they're not, even though they might think they are. I mean, pride gets in the way of a lot of people. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that that would upset you if I was sitting in your home or sitting around the table and I was opening up the scriptures and I said, well, according to the scriptures, you're not saved. How would you react to that? Would you be like Cornelius? Because Cornelius did hear words by which he and his household could be saved and he was saved. And I'm going to read that 
you know, you're going to learn about that near the end of our program today. But what we're going to talk about now is what brought Cornelius from that state of not being saved to sending for Peter and hearing the words. What qualities exist in him, such as qualities that should exist in your life and should exist in my life. If you're not saved, you can be, but you need to ask yourself, do these qualities exist in my life? Just don't say, well, I'm saved and pass it off. Listen, if you're not saved, even though you think you are, do these four qualities exist in your life? We'll say, well, Chuck, if I'm saved, then, then these qualities do exist in my life. If I'm not saved, if I have these four qualities, then I will be saved. True. So let's look at them. What's the first thing that we notice in this? The first thing that we notice is that this man feared God. He did not fear man. And, and I like that. Uh, logically, you're thinking that a person who is told that he's not right with the Lord should want to know, well, what does the Lord say about that? And, and that makes sense. I mean, in 1 Peter chapter 4, and verse 11, if any man speaks, let him speak by the oracles of God. If I were to tell you you're not saved, you should say, okay, but Chuck, I, I'm not worried about what you have to say. If God says I'm not saved, that, that's important to me. Well, that's a quality we all need to have. You know, Cornelius, send for Peter. He will tell you words. What kind of words? Inspired words. I mean, if we're going to teach people today, it needs to be from the Word of God, 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And so if I were to tell you, excuse me, if I were to tell you that you're not saved, I would hope that your attitude would be, and if somebody asked me or told me I wasn't saved, I hope all our attitudes would be, what does God say? You know, because I, I, I fear God more than I fear you. And so, Chuck, if you say I'm not saved, um, I, I really don't care. I, I care more about if God says I'm not saved. And so is that your attitude? That, that's the kind of attitude that, that Cornelius had. He wasn't, he wasn't a, a, a afraid of man. He was more fearful of God. And that's what it, we were told in verse 2. He was a devout man and one who feared God with all his household. You need to fear God. Now, the fear that we're talking about here is not to be afraid. Um, the word fear is used two ways in the scriptures. One I just mentioned, to be afraid. The other two is, is reverence, um, having that godly fear. I raised three children. I wanted them to fear me. I didn't want them to be afraid of me, but I wanted them to respect me. And so that's what we have here. And if you're the type of person that fears God. If somebody comes up to you and says you're not saved and they're coming to you with the Word of God, well you're going to respect what they have to say because they're telling you what God says. Unlike in Acts the seventh chapter, if you go back there and read about Stephen standing before a crowd and talked about um, the people there were saying, he was telling the people that when the prophets of old, he took them through Old Testament history and said which of the prophets uh, did not your forefathers kill? You know, and as you read through the Old Testament, so many times when the messenger of God was sent, people hated the messenger. They hated the message. But they were only spokesmen for God. And so a person who is like Cornelius, if they're told they're not saved, and he did become saved because he feared God. And, and you don't need to fear man. And if somebody says, let's say somebody says you're saved. Well, that's nice. But again, who cares what man says? If the Word of God says I'm saved, that's where my comfort is found. But too many people today find comfort in being a follower of man. We need more people like Cornelius. He could handle the fact when somebody said he wasn't saved. The second quality that I want us to notice in, in, in Cornelius is that he was a humble man. That's what's going to help him from going from a state where he thinks he's saved to a state where he is saved because he had humility. Um, it, it even reveals it in this text. 
Now I'm going to look at something negative about Cornelius, but I'm going to put a positive spin on it. You see, when Cornelius sent for Peter, and when Peter comes, I want us to notice here in Acts 10 verse 25, it says, As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifting him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am also a man. Now that relates to our previous point. Uh, first of all, we don't want to elevate man. So what was Cornelius doing here? Well, Cornelius was showing his humility. Now he was rebuked, and rightly so. We're not to worship man. And Peter did the right thing and said, Get up, I'm also a man. Don't you go worshiping me. But I just want us to pick up on something here. And that is that Cornelius was willing to do that. Not that you and I should do that. But we have this attitude of, of humility. And that's what's going to help people to do what is right. When we have pride, when we're full of pride, not wanting to admit or accept that we're wrong, then we're not going to be saved. Now you sit there and say, well Chuck, uh, if you ask me, or tell me I'm not saved, I'm just not going to believe that. I don't care what you tell me. Well, then we're in trouble. If I tell you from the Word of God you're not saved, then you need to do something about it. But you're not going to do anything about it. I wouldn't do anything about it if I'm full of pride. If I'm a person that's not going to be clothed with humility. I need to be just like Cornelius in this situation. I need to be the kind of person that says, you know what, if, I am sa if I'm not saved, I want to be. It's as simple as that. When you find out you're wrong about something, if I'm, on, if I'm um, going someplace and I've gotten the wrong directions and I find out that I was going the wrong way, pride could get in the way and, and I would never get to where I want to go or I can admit that I went the wrong way and do what is right. You need to ask yourself, folks, when I say to you a hypothetical question, um, you're not saved. In other words, not, it's not a question, but if I say you are not saved, will your attitude be, but I want to be? I would hope so. A humble person will always say, but I want to be saved. I want to be saved. But if somebody said to me, Chuck, you're not saved, I'm going, I'm going to say, well, 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 show me. Show me what God has said, because I want to be certain. It gets us back to our first point. I fear God, I fear what He has to say, and I re respect Him. Secondly, I'm not, um, I, I, I don't want to be so full of myself that I cannot possibly be wrong about anything. I can be. I'm a man. I can make mistakes. And I certainly don't want to be wrong about my salvation. So those are two qualities that we notice with Cornelius that we need to possess. The third thing I want to point out is that this man... Uh, had the attitude, which you have to admire, before he was even saved. Remember, he, had, he was to send for Peter so he could hear words by which he and his household would be saved. So he already, already knows that he's not saved. But something interesting happens here in, in verse 27 of Acts 10. Now remember, we read in verse 2 where it said, He feared God with all his household. Okay. So here he is trying to be a good example to his family and even to his friends. In Acts chapter 10, remember when Peter picked him up and said, Stand up, I'm also a man, don't worship me. The very next verse, and this is as Peter came in to see Cornelius, verse 27 reads, And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Cornelius. I love this quality. Cornelius wanted other people to be saved. It's not something he wants to keep a secret. He finds out he's lost. Some people might want to keep that a secret too. And, uh, and then get their life straight and then come back and, and portray that everything was fine all along. Cornelius had people gathered. He sent, he sent for Peter. But he didn't want Peter just to come and teach himself. It's just like you. It's like there have been people who invite me into their home and, and we offer that to you. And I have been invited to people's homes to have a Bible study. 
and one of the most wonderful things had happened. I walked in the house and there were other people there. Just just like Cornelius. Invited some family to, to sit in on the, the study. Some neighbors, um, some friends, co-workers. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's the kind of attitude that we need to have. Now, I'm not saying you're not saved, but what if I did say you're not saved? And you wanted to hear it from the Word of God, and, and you, you want to hear the message, and, and you invite me, and you say, just Chuck, show me from the Scriptures. And when I come there, you have brought other people. How wonderful that is. That's a quality that we all need to possess, that we want to be saved, but we want other people to be saved too. It's not a prideful thing. You know, Cornelius, you bring people around, you're actually showing to these people that you think you're lost too, or at least the possibility that you're lost. Fine. I'm not going to let pride get in the way. Previous point. But I also have this compassion of wanting to spread the news to other people because the message isn't going to be just for Cornelius. Yet he was lost. But I'm telling you that that message that Peter was going to bring to Cornelius, he brought to his whole household, is the same message that's to go into all the world and be preached. That's Mark 16 and verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Do you think Cornelius heard a different message that you and I need to hear? No, oh, it's the same message. Same message. And so, whatever you need to hear, your family needs to hear. Whatever your family needs to hear, your neighbors need to hear. Everybody needs to hear the same message. That's why Jude 3 says there's a common salvation. And you and I need to make sure that not only that we are saved, but we want to help other people become saved. Three great qualities. But look at this fourth one. And it's a quality we all need to possess. And that is Cornelius, this man, what he did was he obeyed. He obeyed the message. I want to pick it up in verse 47. As, the, as Peter was preaching to Cornelius and his household, um, an interesting thing is this is the first record of a non-Jew becoming a Christian. And Peter had brought Jews with them, and of course, there's an interesting story going on here in the 10th and the 11th chapter where the Jews, the Jewish Christians, needed to understand that the gospel is for everybody, also for the Gentiles. And so when something unique was happening to Cornelius and his household while Peter was speaking, I want us to notice that what Peter said to the Jews that were there, and that's as in verse 47. He says to the Jews, Can anyone fear, forbid water that these, that's Cornelius and his household, that these should not be baptized, who had received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. Peter's preaching to them. And immediately they're baptized. It's like in Acts chapter 8 with the Ethiopian. said, well, there's water. What hinders me from being baptized? He did it right away. In Acts chapter 16, the Philippian jailer, he, he was baptized at midnight. When people want to become Christians, they do it right away. Acts 2 and verse 37, when they heard the message, they were pricked in their heart, and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, let every one of you repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, what? For the remission of your sins. In verse 41, those that gladly received the word were baptized. It was done immediately. People needed to become Christians. They wanted to become saved. Saved from their sins. And so, when I look at a man like Cornelius and say, well, how could this person who had all those wonderful qualities already admit that he wasn't saved? Well, he listened to the Lord. And he did exactly what he was told. And you need to ask yourself, do you have that same disposition? Do you have a humble heart? Can you accept the fact that if the Lord said you are not saved, that you would believe it and then get saved? There are so many people, folks, who when they find out that they're not saved, or they're told they're not saved, get angry, 
say, I don't believe it, get out of my house. My pastor says I'm saved. My friends say I'm saved. My family says I'm saved. I believe in God. I pray to God. You know, I have all the support around me from the good things that I do. Look, that's pride gets in the way. Cornelius had all those things. And I'm, not, I'm not saying those are bad things. It's good that you believe in God. It's good that you would pray. It's nice that you do things for other people. But those things don't get you saved. Do you understand? If it did, then Cornelius didn't need to be saved. And God got it wrong, but he didn't. But this man's heart was right to be receptive to the gospel message. And so the question is, is your heart receptive? I'm not saying you're not saved. What if you're not? What if you're not? Wouldn't you want to be certain? Do you want to be sure? You shouldn't be afraid of investigation. You, you would be afraid, you should be afraid of not being investigated by this. You know, that's what uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself whether you're in the faith or not. And so, if you want to be certain, you say, Chuck, can we have a Bible study? I just want, I just want to be certain. I just want to be certain. Can we get together and just study the scriptures? I just want to make sure. And I've had people do that. I want to make sure that I'm right with the Lord. That I am saved. I might think I am saved, and I might be, but I might think I'm saved, but I'm not. And boy, how terrible it would be to stand before our Lord on judgment that day like those in Matthew chapter 7 and verses 21 through 23 and getting the shock of your eternal life that you thought you were ready for heaven, but you weren't. Folks, we offer you a free face-to-face -face Bible study class. Of course, we can come into your home at a time that suits you. I had a lady call up and said, Chuck, can you, you and your wife come Saturday afternoon? Okay. So I'm go we're going to a class on Wednesday mornings, some t sometimes Tuesday nights. Whatever fits your schedule, if you want to have a Bible study, we'll just come with our Bibles and make sure that you're saved. And if you're not, you can be. It's as simple as that. We offer a free home Bible study course you can take in the comfort of your own home. That'll help you to learn also, to make sure, compare yourself to what the Word of God has to say. Ask your Bible questions. We'll deal, deal with it on this program. Contact us. Uh, we'll put you on the mailing list for the weekly bulletin if you would like. Please don't forget our live weekly radio program every Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, 98.5 on your FM dial. Folks, don't forget our website because we stream our services live. It's not to replace going to worship God. Obviously, it's for the shut-ins and for those looking for the truth. But we are to assemble. We are to come together, not forsake that. Hebrews 10 and verse 25. But if you want to check us out on the Internet, by all means do that. Go to our website and you can click on the icon there and watch our Bible study and listen to sermons. Come and worship with us. The River Ridge Church of Christ, 5600 Van Road, two miles east of Castle High School. Thank you for being with us, and we hope you'll be back next time as we once again open up our Bibles and study the Word. Thank you, folks, and have yourselves a great day.